What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV, and I am back, but not for long for this time, and this time only until I am back uh, from the honeymoon. But I'm here because uh, we've had our made our third signing already uh, of mm. preseason. Eves Basuma has joined Tottenham officially now. Uh, it's been announced on the website, it's been announced on Twitter, and I am so happy with this transfer. 25 million to bring in someone like Eves Basuma is an absolute steal. And not only that, but um, to bring in that quality to the midfield, Premier League proven, um, a player that if you watched our tier list, we put him in must sign as well. I mean, we can't be happier uh, with this signing. I mean, I don't know who we can get for that kind of price that will represent the same kind of value as Yves Basuma will do. I mean, I think he comes in as now our strongest midfielder as well uh, in the squad. I genuinely believe that. Um, I'm just going to read to you the announcement on the website. It's not very long, but it says, we are delighted to, uh, delighted to announce the signing of Yves Basuma from Brighton and Hobe Albion, subject to granting work permit. The Mali International has agreed a deal that will run until 2026. The dynamic midfielder Yves began his youth career at Majestic SC before joining Malian outfit Real Bamako in March 2016, headed to France to join Lille, making 55 senior appearances, scoring four goals. In July 2018, he signed for Brighton, making his debut the following month, registering his first league goal in July 2020, a strike which was nominated for Premier League's Goal of the Month award. Across four seasons with the Seagulls, he made 123 appearances in all competitions, scoring six goals in the 21-22 season, helping them to a ninth-place finish in the Premier League, the highest top-flight finish in the club's history. On the international stage, he has made 23 appearances to date, scoring three occasions since making a senior debut in October 2015. The following year, he represented Mali at the African Cup of Nations, despite the decisive goal to help seal the team's place in the final, where they'd eventually finish runners-up. Eve was again called up to Mali for the Mali team ahead of the rescheduled African Cup of Nations, which took place earlier this year. And then there's pictures of him signing his contract and stuff like that. Um, and this is actually our second Malian international. Can you name the first? Freddie Canute. There you go. There you go. Come I think on. that was a bit of an easy one. But um, now I think it's a brilliant signing. I know you and Brian have covered it to the absolute death this week, <laughs> but um, I, c I literally couldn't be happier. I think the one thing where he probably needs to improve is his end product um, in terms of in front of goal, getting more goals, getting more assists. But I think that with the quality he has in the terms of his passing quality, I think he has that in his locker, doesn't he? Yeah, it just simply hasn't been his role when he was at Brighton. He was very much a deep-lying uh, midfielder, very much doing the defensive work. His defensive numbers are astounding. They're uh, some of the best, if not the best, in the Premier League in terms of tackles and interceptions. He covers so much ground. He uh, has um, unbelievable amounts of uh, running power and energy. His dribbling and um, a press resistance is um, second, to not, uh, second to very few in the Premier League. Uh, he's going to be able to allow us to play that... Um, uh, play out from the back a lot a lot simpler with um you know the ability of when we it's like when we had Moussa Dembele we knew we could give it to him in tight situations he could wriggle out those situations and create the space going forward Basuma is going to be exactly the same as that um he has that unbelievable ability and dribbling ability to wriggle out of unbelievable situations and he has the strength as well so it's going to be a phenomenal signing in terms of his um goals and assists and stuff like that he does have a good pretty good shot on him I'm reading though apparently uh Brian fans uh, feel like he sh um, sometimes he shoots a bit uh, um, like he, he can a, a lot of the time they end up in the stands a lot of his shots and he has something he has to work do, on. Do, do. Exactly. Did he like the Cora? Like but look, he has, from what I've seen, he's got, he's a few, hit a few perlers, that's for sure. <coughs> he definitely has it in him. So I think that's definitely he can, something he can work on. His long range passing is really good. Um, he's got a very good um, uh, cross-field pass. Um, he's one of the most accurate and the most consistent in the Premier League at that. Um, he just, maybe when it comes to his short-range um, passing, he kind of either, he's not in the areas where he can make the difference in the final third in terms of being creative, or he just isn't that adventurous with his passing. But in terms of progressive passes and key passes, things like that, he does rank pretty low. And um, although his passing is very accurate, usually in the high in the 90 percent 89 percent of passing accuracy um he doesn't usually pass that progressively or that um or it's just very safe so maybe that's something he has to work on when he's uh, at spurs there's something content work on him because he's very good at passing 
just maybe doesn't use it to the best of his ability. But in terms of the physicality, um, the, uh, his defensive quality, uh, his awareness, uh, his dribbling ability, ball carrying ability is a- is absolutely brilliant. And uh, I can't wait to see him in the Spurs shot and how he's going to progress because I'm sure under Conte he's going to become a better player and especially with the better players around him. Yeah, and he's very tenacious in that middle of the park. I mean, he he knows really how to control a game from that middle of the park as well. I mean, we've seen it time and time again. I mean, even cast your mind back to earlier on um, in the season, just gone in that cup game when they came, when Brighton came to Spurs. I mean, Spurs ran them ragged that day. But I mean, I just kept looking at Basuma being like, wow, Mm -hmm. what a player this guy is. I mean, he was running circles at times around our midfield. And when you're looking at my midfield of last year, where it was predominantly Hoybier and Bentancourt in the middle of a double pivot, which one do you see him fighting there in the middle? Do you reckon it'll be a Hoiberg or a Bentenko? It's an interesting one. Part of me thinks actually it's going to be Hoiberg he's going to be with. Um, I think I think as much as Bentenko came in and really improved our midfield, like he, he, he gave us that extra balance, I actually feel like uh, Hoiberg was the most consistent in the second half of the season. I've always felt like Conte loves Hoiberg. He always trusts him in all the situations. Whenever... Um, he's bringing someone off to maybe force the issue. It's usually Bentancor he brings off instead of Hoybier. So obviously Hoybier's improvement can uh, can definitely be lended to someone like Bentancor coming in. But also you got to remember Hoybier has just had very inconsistent partners throughout his time at Tottenham. So having someone he can rely on next to him has brought a new edge to him. And I feel like if... Um, First of all, I think he very much could be a three in the middle. But I think if he's going to partner someone, it might well be Hoybier for me. But obviously, Ben Tenko's also been brilliant. So it's going to be an interesting battle for sure. So you think he's going to be more fighting Ben Tenko for that role than Hoybier? I've got a feeling. Also, we're also, yeah, I, I was thinking the same when I was when we were doing that trance video. That's what I put. I wanted Basuma to be fighting Bentancourt for that role. But also, when you're looking at it, it gives us options because he can also play in that Hoybier role as well. First of all, and second of all, um, you're looking at it and you're being like, wow, like these midfield options are growing like really strongly now. And when you're looking at last year, where it was literally just them two, with Skip coming back now and Basuma coming in, and potentially even a Christian Eriksen on top of that. You're looking at the midfield and it's not only do we have strength in numbers, but the quality is there. It's unbelievable, that quality, if we can bring in yeah. Ericsson as well. And all, all the good age, except for Ericsson, obviously, be 30, all are pretty good ages as well. 25, uh, Bentacles, 20, uh, 24, Hoybier's 25 or 26 now. And then obviously Skip's 21. So really, um, not really nice balance to the midfield. And uh, I think different players having different roles as well um so there's a real nice mix of different qualities and different experiences and i think it's very exciting i think once we get ericsson through the door i believe that's probably if we do i believe that would be probably be our midfield done for the for the for the summer and now and i think that'll be great to go into the season with those five as options um couldn't have asked for much better to choose from really uh um for for antonio conte i'm sure he'll be delighted and like oh you know you could all the all of them are really good in their own right, and then Skip's going to be improving as well. He's going to be the up and coming one who can who's going to be battling for that first team spot. So it's going to be so interesting next season that battle. But look, there's going to be so many games uh, next season. You know, with Champions League, the, and all the all the all the Premier games and the World Cup during the season is going to be very congested as well. So there's going to be plenty of time for all the players. And you've got to remember, Basuma is actually not going to the World Cup as well, which is also mm-hmm. could be an advantage to us because all the other midfielders going to be very tired after that and yet Basuma will be fresh so definitely so also something to consider but obviously he's going to be unavailable whenever there's an African Cup of Nations yeah um, and also the thing that we were talking about a couple of weeks ago with Harry Kane uh, playing a lot of times in the critical zone in terms of his fitness mm. I mean Hoybier couldn't have been far away from that as well because he plays week in week out hardly gets a rest um, ever since he's come to Tottenham so um, it'll be good. How many times have we said Hoybier's being overplayed? Hoybier's being overplayed. And yeah. this signing should alleviate that a little bit as well, shouldn't it? Definitely. Uh, he's. Th- this is one of the main reasons we're getting such quality because we want to. We want to be able to uh, chop and change without losing as much quality as we did last season. And um, I think I just think Basuma is a fantastic, fantastic buy. Couldn't couldn't have wished for a better buy. Um, do we want to see the video? Yeah, put it on. All right. Let's go. So this is Basuma, his announcement video from the Spurs social media team. Looking great. And I'm sure it's uh, 
pissing off a lot of Arsenal fans, which is very happy because they were twer- <laughs> they they were very much twerking for him for a lot of the summer. There's there, there's very good reports, especially from um, Sky Sports, saying Arsenal are very much interested in Basuma um, this summer, and the fact we've gone over the line a four year deal as well. Um, I think I think Champions League football is a massive reason why yeah. we've got him. To be honest, I think it's a massive reason. Um, I because... think so, and it's a massive step up for him as well. Um, and I think going to Arsenal, yes, it would have been a big step up, but I think Champions League football is the massive step up. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I agree with that. So, uh, let's so I'm see. completely delighted. I'm so delighted to get this let's one. See, uh, if you could have asked me for anyone, it would have been him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's that's who's he's the one we wanted, isn't it? Here's him saying that we um, he he's here because he had a dream of playing Champions League football, and um, that's a, one of the main reasons he came. Um, so I think it's honestly a, a really really good signing, really exciting signing. Um, and I think he's also got so many more levels to go up as well. Absolutely. Um, I think we haven't seen the best of him at Brighton just yet. Uh, once he once he um, gets into the full swing of how, how he wants to play at Spurs, once he gets ingrained in Conte's system, I think he's got all the qualities to be even better than, uh, than he's been showing. Yeah, I completely agree. And, you know, I'm just loving uh, the way this transfer window has started. I mean... It's been open barely a week, just over a week, and you're looking at it, and we've got three signings through the door. Fraser Forster, um, who's going to be a great backup for the English quota. You've got um, Perisic, who you really probably couldn't have got better on the left-hand side, maybe a Kostic. And you've got Bissouma in the middle, who's, like we said, we, we don't know if we could have got better in the middle as well, especially for that price. So we've started at a million miles an hour in this transfer window. And, and we so aggressive, so money. aggressive as well. Yeah, and we haven't even spent a lot of money. I know, you know I know, I mean? it's been brilliant. Like you've got so... Arsenal, you've got Arsenal, who's brought in uh, this Vieira geezer. Uh, yeah, he might be a good player, but they they've spent more on one player than we have on three players, and and they've got to be looking at our window, being like, wow, what are Tottenham doing right now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, we we I think. Finally, we're strengthening from a position of strength, which we haven't done in a long, long time. Um, we've uh, always, when we get to these positions, usually, don't we? We rest on our laurels. We allow things to stagnate. We um, we usually, like, uh, if, if, this, if this season just happened, happened five years ago, we probably make minimal changes, probably wait to the end of the window for any opportunities and go with the same in and see if we can get top four with pretty much the same team. That's all we would be doing. But Conte, thankfully, won't accept that. And um, yeah. now we're in a position where actually we have a great, unbelievable manager. We have world-class players in their prime. And now's not the time to rest on your laurels and try and go again with the same players. Now is the time to strengthen seriously and actually look to challenge. And it looks like we're finally doing that. And early on, look, we're getting early signings now. We're pushing ahead. We're being aggressive, as you say. I'm I'm delighted with how it's going so far. Let's hope we've got. I think we and we haven't even had got to the main signings yet. So, I think there's a couple big signings still to come, in my opinion, with the money that we're looking to spend, and that being on a centre back and a forward. And you have to spend big or both of them. And maybe that's why they're taking the longest because obviously they're going to be the most expensive. But this is a fantastic start. Jed Spence and Ericsson probably looks like potentially to come as well. And if we, even if we get Spence and Ericsson, now all that whole all those five signings would be for less than that Vieira guy, which be would be unbelievable. Less, it'll be yeah, it'll be for a similar price, won't it? Because if we get Spence, it'll be around twenty million. Oh yeah, it'll be, it'll be free. And they got so, four, they signed with forty million euros. Okay, yeah, so, so it'll, it'll be five be million more. more, but still, but unbelievable, still, I mean, it's unbelievable business. And Conte was saying he wants six in before the South Korean tour, three in already. Like you say, probably Spence and Ericsson in the next in the next week. Hopefully, I think Spence will definitely get done. I'm hoping Ericsson will too. And then I think we'll get a centre back in hopefully before um, the South Korean break too. And I got a feeling we will go for Richarlison, but I think the Richarlison deal might happen later in the window, and Everton might want to see if what bids and what money they can get, and then maybe we can slip in with a cut price deal like right at the end of the window for him. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be the case. It sounds like Everton kind of want to need to sell, but they're you know at the moment they're charging a lot, and when as the window goes on, the price might drop. So we we'll have to wait and see yeah. on that one. Um, but I, I think it's very exciting that we're off to such a great start. And I'm looking forward to what the rest of the window brings, to be honest. And uh, Basuma, I couldn't have wished for 
a better centre mid to bring in. Honestly, one of the one of the top ones I wanted on the list. So, absolutely fantastic news. Um, long may it continue. What an exciting preseason this is already turning out to be for Tottenham. How are you, Spurs? Absolutely loving it. Now I go off on my holiday. Three more signings by the time I get back. Let's hope so. Right. But uh, thank you, everyone, for joining today. We'll see you all very soon. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come, come on, Spurs. you Spurs. Yeah!